Stray was released in 2022 to massive praise and quickly shot up to the near the top of almost everybody I know's list. Me, on the other hand, I saw the game and thought, it's about a cat. What's so impressive about that? Fast forward nearly two years and I finally got around to picking it up myself and you know what? I take it back. The game is pawsome. Catastic even. So join me, Bomb Chop, in getting the poor Latinum trophy. The game begins with the cat will be controlling, chilling out with all his family when they all decide to take a cat nap during a heavy storm. When all the cats awaken, they decide to go for a stroll. No idea where to, but while traversing the world, we jump onto this pipe and slip, falling down into the darkness. Once we finally come around, we find ourselves entering the underground city, which earns us the first trophy, Missed Jump. As we enter the city, we see lots of these little bug type creatures run off into the darkness. These are called Zerks, and they will cause me a hell of a lot of pain momentarily. We come to a section and there is hundreds of the little buggers, and we have to run away from them to safety. So for the next trophy I had to complete this section without having any of these Zerks latching onto me, and I think I spent about an hour re-attempting this section before getting so peed off I turned off my Playstation and called it a night. It was late in my defence. The next day I took on the challenge again and after around another 25 attempts I finally got it and this is how I earned the trophy, can't catch me. With what's considered the hardest trophy of the entire game now successfully bagged, we enter a part of town that seems to be free from Zerks and find ourselves in an apartment. In this apartment we step all over the keyboard, which happens to open a secret door, and then inside we find a few fuses which when installed into a computer powers up and allows us to be introduced to B12. B12 will be instrumental for communication, item management amongst other things, but for now we granted another trophy, not alone. We then make our way into the main part of the city which is inhabited by man-made robots that have now taken over since the human's extinction. All the robots begin running away and fearing for their lives as they think we are a zerk, when one robot gives us a chance to show them we aren't a threat. We can't understand what the robot is saying but with the help of B12, we can communicate, and with this, we get the trophy, Cat Got Your Tongue. From here, we turn around and push a basketball down a slope on some stairs, so that it lands inside a basket to earn the trophy, Boom Shakalaka. We then came across a paper bag on the ground and decided we would stick our head in and see what was inside. And what was inside? A trophy. Curiosity killed the cat. I then explored the slums looking for diaries of some robots who had left searching for a route to the outside. While searching for these books I also ticked off a couple of miscellaneous trophies. I came across a TV, and for changing the channel enough times to see all the different channels, I got the trophy, Telly a Chat.
I then executed my 500th jump in game, which earned me the trophy Cat A Pult. And then, with all 8 music sheets collected, including the one picked up as I got the last trophy, I then handed them in to the guitar using robot for the trophy Mio Luddy. With all the diaries collected, we visit Momo, who was meant to leave the slums with the other robots before deciding to stay behind and tried to find a way to be able to communicate with his friends on the outside. We bump into another robot, Seamus, whose father is one of the robots who left the slums. We find a transmitter and get it fixed, and then are tasked with planting a transmitter atop a nearby building, but in order to get there, we must get past more zerks that reside within the tower. Once the transmitter is fitted, we take a conveniently placed bucket on a rope all the way back to the safe zone within the slums. We are then tasked with finding Doc after using the transmitter. We find out he's stuck nearby and we have to go and help him by restoring power to his generator. This alerts yet more Zerk, and as I was about to die for the very first time, I let out a little meow in sadness, which happened to be my 100th meow, and it got me the trophy, a little chatty. With the power back on, Doc creates a Zerk destroyer flashlight, and attaches it to our feline friend, we then help Doc back to his son in the slums, and they agree to open the sewers for us. Through the sewers is where the other two robots went when they left. During the sewers section, I had to not use my new fancy weapon for a trophy, but before that, I died a fair few times and thought, I might as well just die a total of 10 times for the trophy. No more lives. Then, I completed the rest of the sewer section without killing any Zerks for the trophy, Pacifist. Now we're out of the sewers, we reach the Ant Village, where we meet up with Balsahar, the second of three robots who left the summer searching for the outside world. He points us in the direction we need to head in order to meet up with Clementine, the fourth and final robot. While in the ant village, we decide to disrupt a friendly game of Mahjong for the trophy, Cat Astrophy. We then make our way up to the top of the ant village, which brings us out into the subway of Midtown. We then get the chance to nuzzle up to our fifth robot, and this bags us the trophy, Cat's Best Friend. We continue on searching all areas as I had been doing throughout the entirety of the game up until this point, when I earned another trophy, this time for entering Midtown. The trophy, Catwalk. While in Midtown, we find out that Clementine is wanted by the authority, because no robot should be trying to make it outside the underground. We eventually find her and she gives us a note that we need to pass on to another robot who is within the resistance. Upon passing the robot the note, we then have to fetch a hard hat and a high vis so that he can sneak us into the factory. We've got to get in there to grab a power cell in order to power up the subway station and the train. Once inside the factory, we successfully sneak through, grab the power cell undetected. The whole authority is now on high alert and we head back to Clementine, but she has gone to the bar to meet up with the resistance robot. We leave Clementine's apartment, and for getting through this whole section without being spotted by security, we get the trophy, Sneak Kitty. We head into the nightclub where Clementine has told us she's hanging out, and while inside we nab ourselves another miscellaneous trophy. By finding a record, distracting the DJ, and doing some DJing of our own, which earns us the trophy, Scratch. Okay. 
We climb up into the VIP section of the nightclub and it is here we find out that Clementine and ourselves have been set up and ratted out by the other resistance member. This results in us being thrown into a prison but also nets us the trophy Alcatraz. While in the prison, the objective is clear. We need to release Clementine, rescue B12 who is under heavyish guard, and then escape. As we're about to complete our great escape, the guards are alerted and we jump onto the back of a vehicle that Clementine has commandeered and drive away while being chased by security bots. We get to the subway station and Clementine drops us off before hopping back into the van to buy us more time. So we use this time to power up the old subway station and make our way towards the last level of the game, the control room. Once we are at the control room, we have to solve a couple of small puzzles in order to gain entrance and then power up the control system. In doing so, B12 sacrifices themselves so that we have enough power to operate the huge mechanical rooftop that has kept the underground from the outside. We then leave the control room and wander out into the bright shining sunlight of the outside and this completes the game and nets us the trophy eye opener. With the story complete it was just a case of using chapter select to pick up some odd bits that I'd missed. Each level had a number of memories that had to be found and for the most part were pretty much in or around the path you would take for the story. However, there were a couple I'd missed, so I went back into the levels and found these memories and once all these memories had been collected, I got the trophy, I remember. Then I had to collect one more badge. The game has a total of 6 badges to collect and 3 of them are tied in with the story while the other 3 are kinda like side missions. The badge I'd missed was for finding a robot's keys inside the factory level and returning them to him. Simple. Something so simple but easily missed. Anyway, once I'd got all 6, I got the trophy, badges. Another trophy I'd missed, which was a surprise, was for scratching a scratching spot in every single level. I'd made notes of all the scratching spots I'd found in each level. Some had multiple and some only had one. But I got very lucky that the first level I'd revisited and scratched the spot was the one that I'd somehow missed, yet had written down on a pad next to me. I must have found it but forgot to actually do the interaction. So, for scratching a spot in every level, I got the trophy, Territory. Two trophies left now, and these took me a combined total of three hours to complete. The first is for lying down and sleeping on a spot for a total of one hour, real lifetime that is, which netted me the trophy, Productive, Day. And then the last trophy, and the only thing in my way of earning another platinum trophy, was for speed running and completing the game within two hours. I died a total of three times, got lost on an occasion or two, but still managed to complete the story in roughly one hour and fifty minutes, earning me both the trophy, I am speed, and the beautiful platinum. Whoop, whoop.